Welcome, beloved family, guests. We are so happy that you are here with us on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Just a reminder that right around the corner is Holy Week, and we will have a different schedule of worship services, so make sure you are watching for that. But in addition that we will have this year is prayer stations outside by the bell tower. Uh, we will have a different prayer station for Palm Sunday, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. So please watch for those times and um, be a part of that. Thank you. Also, just a couple of other things. One is that we will be having a pancake Zoom breakfast on Palm Sunday, so come and be a part of that as well. 
Uh, we look forward to just having some conversation, sharing a couple of pancakes and hanging out before our Palm Sunday worship at 930. And also just a friendly reminder as well that we are going to be uh, asking folks to please come to the church parking lot on Monday, Thursday, as well as Easter Sunday. And we will pass out prepackaged communion elements to you. So when we get to that point in the service, as you watch the service on your device in your car, you may then participate in communion uh, with everybody else in the church parking lot. And uh, Pastor Matt. Yeah, one last quick announcement. If you're watching this on Thursday night, we are uh, every single Thursday night, we do have uh, a adult ed offering. This Thursday and the following Thursday is going to go ahead and be book club Bible study. So if you're watching this on Thursday night, d come and join us. We'll be looking at the We'll be looking at the book of Genesis, chapters 10 through 14. If you're watching this after Thursday night, then come and join us the following one, uh, where we'll be taking on chapters 15, 16, 17, and 18, 1 through 15. And know that everyone is welcome to just come and join us on Zoom. If you're looking for that Zoom uh, link, go ahead and look on Facebook under events or contact the office. With no further announcements, let us begin today's worship. Let us start with confession and forgiveness. God of comfort and God of challenge. Sometimes we come to you full of complaints and dissatisfaction. Nothing is enough. We do not recognize your blessing at work in our day-to-day -day lives. Forgive us when we become so comfortable that we moan and groan about the most insignificant details of our lives. In, you, in our complaints, challenge us to see the bigger picture of oppression, injustice, and inequality that is all around us. Forgive us when we close our eyes for fear of what you might show us. And open our eyes so that we can see what you see in the world. Amen. We are blessed because God's image resides deep within each of us. We are blessed because God loves and forgives us. We are blessed to be a blessing, to love others as God has loved us.
Let us pray together. O God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son who lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death, lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. An introduction for our first lesson. Though God provides food and water for the Israelites in the wilderness, they whine and grumble. They forget about the salvation they experienced in the Exodus. God punishes them for their sin. But when they repent, God also provides a means of healing, a bronze serpent lifted up on a pole. The first lesson is from the 21st chapter of Numbers. The Israelites had to go around the territory of Edom, so when they left Mount Hor, they headed to south toward the Red Sea. But along the way, the people became so impatient that they complained against God and said to Moses, Did you bring us out of Egypt just to let us die in the desert? There's no water out here, and we can't stand this awful food. Then the Lord sent poisonous snakes that bit and killed many of them. Some of the people went to Moses and admitted, It was wrong of us to insult you and the Lord. Now please ask him to make these snakes go away. Moses prayed, and the Lord answered, Make a snake out of bronze and place it on top of a pole. Anyone who gets bitten can look at the snake and won't die. Moses obeyed the Lord, and all of those who looked at the bronze snake lived, even though they had been bitten by the poisonous snakes. This ends the first lesson. An introduction to our gospel lesson. To explain the salvation of God to the religious leader Nicodemus, Jesus refers to the scripture passage quoted in today's first reading. Just as those who looked up upon the brown serpent were healed, so people will be saved when they behold Christ lifted up on the cross. The Gospel Lesson According to John, Chapter 3 And the Son of Man must be lifted up, just as that metal snake was lifted up by Moses in the desert. Then everyone who has faith in the Son of Man will have eternal life. God loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who has faith in him will have eternal life and never really die. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn its people. He sent him to save them. No one who has faith in God's Son will be condemned. But everyone who doesn't have faith in him has already been condemned for not having faith in God's only Son. The light has come into the world, and people who do evil things are judged guilty because they love the dark more than the light. People who do evil hate the light and won't come to the light, because it clearly shows what they have done. But everyone who lives by the truth will come to the light, because they want others to know that God is really the one doing what they do. This ends the Gospel lesson. At this time, I would like to speak with the children. So make sure you can come on up and see. And today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite books, and I used to love reading this to my kids, and it's Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Did you ever read this book? I mean, Alexander wakes up and he's instantly in a bad mood. Everything is going wrong and he is complaining. He's complaining about the toy he did or didn't get in his cereal. He doesn't like lima beans. He surely doesn't like kissing. And all of these things and all he wants to do is go away. And in our lesson from Numbers, we kind of hear that same thing from the Israelites. They're complaining. They're complaining about what they have to eat. They're complaining because it's not like when they were home, because they're in exile. They were sent away from their homes to live in a foreign land. 
And sometimes we wake up, right? We're in a bad mood. Things aren't how we want them to be. Things aren't how we hope they are. And we just start to complain. Now, if you never complain, I just want to give your parents a big hug. Because with five kids, I had a lot of complaining going on in my house. But what I like best about this book is after his bath where everything went wrong, he's getting ready for bed. And Alexander's mom says, after he says, it has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, his mom says, yeah, my mom says some days are like that. And for me, it's a reminder that things can go wrong through the day and we can complain. But at the end of the day, we have that chance to rest and to know that tomorrow it will be a better day. Because while we sleep, God's got this. God, who doesn't micromanage and make sure nothing bad happens to us, God calls us to come to rest and to trust, just like the Israelites were called to do. They stopped their complaining after God gave them a focal point of the bronze snake. They could look at that and remember, not only had they been complaining, but that God has sent healing, God has forgiven them, and tomorrow they can start again. So, you know, with your day ahead, you know, maybe things aren't going to go right, and that's okay. God understands our complaints that we have along the way, but also know that some days are like that, but tomorrow will be a better day. Amen. So in our gospel lesson, Jesus is continuing his nighttime discussion with Nicodemus. And we can't really read and understand the gospel, at least our section that starts today, with the first words, and just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, we can't understand the rest of what Jesus said until we go back to our story from Numbers to see what that all meant with the serpent being li lifted up. So like I said to the kids, the Israelites were in exile, and they had been gone from their homeland for far too long. And they could not stop complaining. They didn't like the food that God provided for them. They didn't like the manna. They didn't like the way things were. They didn't like it because it wasn't what they were used to. They wanted all the things from home, all the things how they used to be, before exile. So to punish them, God sends snakes. And these snakes bite them and start killing them. And I was really glad that Pastor Todd didn't have to preach this sermon because, yeah, snakes are not his favorite. So in the midst of all of this happening, they the Israelites go back to Moses and they say, please pray to your God. This needs to stop. So Moses prayed and God told him, Create a bronze serpent, put it on a stick, and raise it high so that every time the Israelites are complaining and the snakes bite them, they just need to look at this serpent and they will be healed. You know, every time that they would have to look to the serpent, they would be reminded of their sin reminded of how they need to come back and repent that it is god who gives healing and forgiveness i mean does any of this sound familiar you know we've talked a lot in recent times about this kind of being our wilderness you know there's days i wake up and i just want to complain i mean we spent a year in this life that is not like what we know and we complain. We complain about having to wear masks or being limited in what we do and where we go and with whom we can spend time. 
we complain because we just want things the way they were. I mean, I could complain right now. Here I am standing in this sacred, sacred spot without you. And I am looking into a camera and preaching to you and hoping that my words would have as much meaning as if we were together. And I just want to complain and I just want to cry out. But today, there's no bronze serpent for us. We don't look to a thing to be, have our sins pointed out and to find healing. No, Jesus goes on in our gospel lesson and says, And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. The crucified Christ. That we just need to look at the cross, to look at Christ, to find in our deepest soul our repentance. We look to the cross for healing and forgiveness. You know, and we journey through Lent. This is the fourth week of Lent. And we focus on the cross through our whole journey, right? And it's a time of contemplation where we look at all of our complaining, all of our coveting. We want what other people have. All of the ways that we are not loving our neighbor as we all just try to make it through pandemic. But you know, we can stand beneath the cross and say these complaints. We can feel them in our heart. However they are, God can handle our complaining. Because you see, God knows our suffering. God knows our pain and hears our cries and knows our fears and our sorrow. You know, we are called to look upon the cross, to know God's love and God's mercy, to know God's grace, even forgiveness for our selfishness. We get this through the crucified and risen Christ. As we continue through our gospel lesson, Jesus goes on to talk about living in the light or living in the darkness. And we need to understand, you know, people live in the shadow of darkness because they can hide. Because those ugly parts of us that we don't want to show other people, they're hidden when we're in the shadows. But you know, the same light, the same light that exposes our sin, this same light also reveals God's grace. It reveals the love and the mercy that is poured out on us as we live as people of God. So each day, look at the cross, at the crucified Christ, lifted high. Take your sins, your selfishness, your brokenness, and lay it at the foot of the cross. And in that light, in the light of Christ, you can allow God's mercy to free you from your sin, to shower you with light so that we can be the light of Christ for others. We are called, not just in Lent, but all days, to step into the light, to shine this light into the darkest corners, the darkest depths of humanity, and to reveal the cross, to be seen by all as a beacon of hope and healing. Amen. Let's confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now take a few moments to watch Tina's church public service announcement. Hello, beloved church family and friends. I'm here to talk to you about something very personal in my life. And, um, you know, I'll thank you ahead of time for listening. And uh, if you have any questions when I'm done talking, you know, feel free to reach out to me at any time. But just over four weeks ago, I was privileged to get the second dose of the COVID vaccination. And I was able to get it under the line of being a spiritual care provider. And the reason why I felt that I was qualified for this is because of what I do. I mean, I have seen and I have heard what it is like for people to be alone during COVID. I have prayed with people over the phone when what they really needed was someone there. I've done the commendation of the dying over the phone, over the phone with my own dad who died alone in his nursing home room with COVID. You know, throughout the pandemic over this past year, I have officiated at least eight funerals as well as committals, as well as graveside memorials, funerals, including my own dad's. And if you've been to a funeral during COVID, you'll know what I'm talking about, but you are in a room with limited capacity. So you have to choose which 25 people can be there to celebrate the life and spirit of your loved one. And if that's not enough to know that people are left out, there's no contact. At my dad's funeral, I couldn't hug my aunts and uncles. I chose to be vaccinated so that we can hopefully get past this pandemic, get through this pandemic. You know, as a future pastor, as a minister in a church, I am called to be with people. So by being vaccinated, I was able to take my own fear out of the equation so that if I was called to be bedside for someone, if I was called to be in a space with someone who needed another person, I could be there. I don't wanna to have to do another commendation of the dying over the phone. And to be a little selfish, I have to say I also did it for my children. I know what it's like for my college graduate to grieve that he did not have a college graduation. I know what it's like for my senior in high school to grieve what a normal senior year would be like, or what eighth graders are feeling because they're distanced from their friends. So I did it for them. I did it for all of you. Because you know, we have our benchmarks. And until this pandemic is, is beatable, until we have reached benchmarks where there are X number of cases, an X number of people who have been vaccinated. 
we won't be able to gather. And I miss you. I miss you so much. And like Pastor Todd said next week, you know, when it's, when it's your turn, when you have the ability to be vaccinated, and if you are on the fence, like he said, look at the science. Talk to your healthcare provider. Prayerfully consider, and if you wanna to talk to someone about it, call me, text me, email me, whatever. I am happy to talk to you about it. But until we get the world vaccinated, we need to keep masking, so I will play my part. And you know, I also do it for the people who can't get vaccinated. There are those with health risks that, that will not be able to do it. So how are we to keep them safe? I mean, if we're called to love our neighbor, what better way to do that than to play our part in trying to get through this pandemic together? Thank you. Let us continue with the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Loving God, holding strong even as we struggle for truth, even as we gamble on other paths, even as we are ready to give in to temptation. Walk with us, O oh God, and help us to see beyond the flashy, beyond the smooth talk, beyond the quick fix. Keep our eyes focused on Jesus, who knew temptation, disappointment, and pain, yet, give, yet gave his life in order to give us life. We pray for everyone here today, for those who could not be with us, and for all who are hurting in any way, especially Jonathan and Doris and Gail, Sharon, Sue, and Sandy. We pray for Craig and Jessica and Becky, for Pat, Paula. We pray for Fran and Ben and Patty and David. We pray for Julie and Katia and Mary, for Ginny, for Sue, for Vicki, for Maddie, for Carol. We pray for Mary, Dick, Donna, and Doris. Hold them and all of us in your grace and bring us to Easter with open hearts and ready lives. Amen. We will now collect our offering at this time.
Let us share together the prayer of dedication. Let us pray together. O oh God, we dedicate our lives and all that we have to the work of life, love, and peace. Receive our gifts and lead us in wisdom and courage. In Jesus' name, we, amen. At this time, we're going to also begin uh, to get ready for communion. So I'm going to ask that you please gather your communion elements at home at this time. Uh, whatever it is that you have available to you. And what we're going to do is we are going to uh, share together um, the great Thanksgiving. And then we're going to have a brief interlude for you to not only read the words of institution and do the Lord's Prayer, but then to either clean yourself or you and your family by saying the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us continue with our great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. our post-communion blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Let us share in the prayer after communion. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and a fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
our closing benediction. Let us rejoice, God so loved the world, pardoned by God's abounding grace, empowered by God's constant love, and protected by God's peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us go, go in, in peace and, and serve the, the Lord. Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. We miss you guys. Love you. Miss